Dawn of War is a strategy game that takes place in the 41st millennium. This is a galaxy where humans and a whole series of alien races are fighting basically a war that's been going on for thousands and thousands of years. And you know, what's really interesting to me about Dawn of War and the story we want to tell in there is like, how are you a hero in the midst of this type of giant endless war? The Eldar are this really interesting faction. They're a species that's been around since the dawn of time. Essentially, they used to run the galaxy. That led them to decadence and essentially led their empire to fall. The Eldar that survived to the present are the ones who stepped away from that corrupt society and are following a sort of warrior path. They have this whole tragic edge and then they have this whole highly arrogant edge. Together they shall achieve righteous victory. The orcs are this great lunatic horde that we get to play with. They're much wilder than the very controlled Eldar and the very regimented Space Marines. They absolutely are funny when you're outside the setting. But in the setting, if you're standing in front of an orc, they are terrifying. They're these homicidal monsters who are gonna rip your head off and laugh at your corpse. Yeah! Gabriel Angelos is the face of the Dawn of War franchise in a lot of ways. He has gone through a great deal over his career, and that's something we wanted to bring in to Dawn of War 3. We like to say that there are no good guys in Dawn of War, and that's true. Certainly you empathize with Gabriel and with the other heroes, but he's definitely done things that make you hesitate. I mean, he condemned his home world to extermination because he found heresy there. And then that's something that weighs on him, but it's also a decision he owns. And I think in that way, he really captures what's important about the Blood Raven. Ah! Maka is a returning character for us. She was first introduced in the original Dawn of War, and we haven't really heard from her since then. When last we saw her, she was very much in charge. There was no other Eldar that she was answering to. Now we find her and she's sort of in a secondary role. She wants to regain that role. She has to find the ways to guide her people. The orcs really come alive when there's a layer of madness and then there's some really smart deviousness happening under the surface. In a story sense, we have a hero in Gorguts who's our orc chieftain who's more cunning than the average orc who has a plan. He's still punching people in the face and ripping their heads off and mounting them on spikes and doing all these crazy orky things, but he's doing it with an agenda. I want it all! We're telling a story about characters not about entire armies. And it's an incredibly challenging but rewarding thing to dig into, especially with a strategy game. We make games where there's a massive army of hundreds of units clashing, and it's easy for that to feel disposable. What the story brings to that is to bring context, and that's what elevates it. But then there's also how we create an environment where it feels like there's a context and a rationale. And that's where things like all the audio barks for all the characters and you know, hearing the Space Marines call out to the Emperor, that just creates a whole tenor to how this universe works, how combat feels. That's our whole setting. The animatics have a very sort of tapestry-like quality. The atmosphere was a huge, huge thing for me. I love the idea of conveying that sense of mist and fog, and I like to imagine that in the 41st millennium, with the kind of weapons that we're talking about that are so fantastic and so powerful, you're gonna be dealing with almost this constant haze and this constant sense of never really being able to see everything in focus at any one time, because there's just so many layers of dust and atmosphere that are locking things off. The animatics capture that so marvelously. Those cinematics really allowed us to 
emphasize those things as important and create some key emotional images that then resonate through the rest of the game. There's tons of amazing things that happen in the cinematics. Kill cans get destroyed and meteors fall from the sky and Thunderhawks disgorge space marines onto a bunch of orcs. There's just so many layers of dust and atmosphere that are blocking things off. The animatics capture that so marvelously. We are so excited for fans to play through the campaign and experience these cinematics themselves.